The Bird People in China is a Japanese fantasy drama film from 1998. The plot of the film follows a simple-minded Japanese businessman, Wada, and a member of a powerful Japanese criminal organization, Yuaiji, both of whom are sent by their bosses to a remote village in Yunnan, China for business. Little did they know that they would discover something opposite from what they expected. The film starts with a plane landing. A boy is narrating a message that since his birth, he has slept more than 10,000 times but has never dreamt of flying like a bird. The scene cuts to a young businessman, Mr. Wada, sitting on a train that is headed to Yunnan, China. He is recording his daily diary, saying that he's been busy with his former assignment as well as a new one that is assigned to him. The people next to him on the train are weirded out to see him speaking to a recorder. He further records that the business trip that he has embarked on is related to the stones in Asia. Previously, Mr. Akamara was in charge of this assignment, but he has been hospitalized due to some personal issue. That is why Mr. Wada is chosen as his replacement to undertake the assignment. The assignment involves evaluating a vein of jade in a remote village in Yunnan. Wada is skeptical about this assignment as he has very limited knowledge about jade stone. However, he is supposed to meet a guide in Yunnan who knows about the vein of jade. Exasperated from seeing Wada talking to a recorder, two passengers play a Japanese song on a speaker. Just then, Wada spots a mysterious man on the train who clicks a picture of Wada. Finally, Wada reaches Yunnan and meets his Chinese guide, Shin, who is fluent in speaking Japanese but terrible in English. He guides Wada to the van, but the mysterious man from the train keeps following him. When Wada and Shin are about to leave, the mysterious man comes in from front of the van and shows Shin a photograph of Shin with another man. Shin thinks that he is Wada's companion, but Wada is unaware of him. The man asks Wada to get out of the van to have a word. Outside the van, he starts beating Wada. Turns out he is a member of the Yakuza, a powerful Japanese criminal organization named Yuji, and he has come to collect the money that they loaned to Wada's company. According to Yuji, Wada's company kept stalling the payment with excuses but finally told the Yakuza that they would pay them back with precious stones. Yuji has actually come from Akumara, but since Akumara is hospitalized for hernias, he feels annoyed to deal with Wada, who seems idiotic to him. Later, Yuji forces Wada to take him along so that he can collect the debt in the form of precious stones. On their way, the door of the van breaks and flies away. Yuji starts to panic, so the driver steps out of the van to get it back. However, he leaves the dirty door on the side of the road and comes back as he doesn't have a rope to tie to it. A moment later, the steering of the vehicle comes off and Yuji and Wada are petrified. Finally, they reach a hotel where both of them share a room. Yuji is seen struggling to cope with the country life and boils with anger when there is no hot water for him. The next morning, Wada, Yuji, and Shin head to the village. On their way, Wada is busy studying the stones, whereas Yuji is enjoying witnessing the life of the Yunnan. They stop by a restaurant to have food where they come across a Japanese researcher who has found carvings of bird people throughout Japan. Wada is fascinated by it and asks him where he found it. The researcher tells him that he found it in Hoikado and Kyushu, the northern and southern tip of Japan, and now has come to find more in Yunnan, as Yunnan is said to be the origin of Japanese culture. He also believes that the legend Hagamoro, the girl who flew down from heaven, also lives there. After the researcher leaves, Wada and Shin are stunned to see a gun fall off Yuji's pants. Yuji quickly picks it up and places it back. Later, they start again to travel toward the village, but due to stagnant rainwater, they're unable to ride on a vehicle. So they start to walk, carrying the luggage with their hands. After entering the village, they climb a mountain, and Wada and Yuji are extremely tired. All of a sudden, it starts to rain again, and amidst the storm, their bags blow away and they lose some of their belongings. However, they think that they've finally made it to the village. Yuji keeps pressuring Wada to get the stones assessed while Wada is upset after losing his belongings. Exasperated by Yuji and his tactless behavior, Wada bursts onto him for bossing him around but quickly cools down after Yuji points the gun at his head. Shen then blows off steam and gets a raft ready for them to depart. Yuji flips out after knowing that it will take two more days to reach the destination where they can get the stones assessed as he thought that they had already reached there. Just then, a group of villagers places a raft in the river that's pulled by tortoises, and the three of them board it. At night, they stop ashore to have some seafood, and Yuji extravagantly enjoys the delicious toadstools. On the other hand, Wada is seen sitting on the side all gloomy. 
After having the toadstools, Yuji seems overjoyed and hyperactive, and he forcefully feeds Wada the toadstools, who also becomes energetic after having them. In his excitement, Yuji fires gunshots in the air, as a result of which a tree branch falls on Shin's head and he loses consciousness. The next day, they again resume their journey, and Shin is alright. Annoyed from traveling for many days, Wada inquires Shin about how long it will take to reach the Jade Village. Upon hearing this, Shin seems quite surprised as his memory starts to fade away and he can't remember where the village is. Wada is in despair and Yuji is enraged as they are in the middle of nowhere. They can't go back nor do they know the direction of the village. They are stuck in this godforsaken place that has no basic facilities. All of a sudden, Wada notices some people ziplining and he approaches them. Turns out the people of the area are familiar with Shin, so they welcome the three of them wholeheartedly and feed them generously. Out of nowhere, Wada spots a girl with blue eyes named Yan Shi Chang, and seeing her, a ray of hope shines in his heart. However, he goes to sleep after recording his daily diary. The next morning, Shin, Wada, and Yuji seek help from a villager to guide them to the Jade Village. On their way, they see a group of kids with pairs of wings marching toward them. The villager tells them that they are students of a school that teaches people how to fly, and they are called bird people. He further adds that this is an old superstition and shame of the village. Yuji is surprised to know that such a school exists in the village and rushes to find it. Upon reaching there, they see the same blue-eyed girl, Shi Chang, all set to fly in the air. Later they meet her, only to find out that she teaches how to fly to school as her grandfather used to fly. However, she herself isn't able to fly and also never saw her grandfather flying. When Shen calls her grandfather crazy, she gets angry and leaves. Later, they leave from there and meet a master lute player, Yan Wu, on their way. Wada tries to call him, but he ignores his call as he became deaf two years ago after suffering from severe fever. Wada keeps exploring the village, whereas Yuji enjoys himself. Later, Yuji is seen ziplining and is super excited after doing it. Meanwhile, Wada finds a jade and shows it to Yuji, but Yuji shows no interest as he's busy ziplining. At night, Wada tries to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Yuji about life on Earth, but Yuji ignores him, lights a cigarette, and goes for a night stroll. The next day, the villagers are in despair to see all of the tortoises killed that were used to pull their raft. Wada is in shock and tries to console the villagers. In the next scene, Shi Chang is seen teaching the kids how to fly, and Yuji keeps clicking their photos with his camera. They all visit her house again. The story of the origin of human flying unravels, and it turns out that Shi Chang's grandfather found a book on the village legend a long time ago that had the method of flying mentioned. At first, the villagers thought it was some kind of fairy tale, but later her grandfather dug out the evidence from the ground outside the village. The wings that were the kids were seen wearing were also recreated from the same book. Shi Chang shows Wada and Yuji the book and that it has cryptic language. She also shows them an English translation of the book that her grandfather rewrote. However, she doesn't understand it as it's written in an uncommon dialect. Later, Wada is mesmerized to hear the girls singing a beautiful song. She then guides them to show a crashed Royal Air Force plane. Turns out that her grandfather was a Royal Air Force pilot and he died after crashing near the village. The girl shows them the graves of her grandparents and parents. Wada notices carvings of bird people on the grave of her grandfather. Everyone seems confused. Yuji asks Wada to translate the legend book and suddenly Wada realizes that he has an electronic dictionary that he can use. So he starts translating it and realizes that it is a diary. He tells Yuji that the diary ends with a pretty unconventional message saying, this is the end, from tomorrow the mornings will be different. The next morning Yuji is seen playing with the kids while wearing wings. Meanwhile, Wada is teaching Shi Chang how to use a recorder. Shi Chang then records herself singing the song which she always hums. Later, Wada is seen listening to her voice on the recorder and translating it. On the other hand, the villagers find one of the alive tortoises and are elated to see it. While everyone is enjoying themselves, Wada is busy translating the song, but halfway through his recorder battery dies and he keeps thinking about the incomplete song. Later, he shows the translated song to Shin, who makes him realize that he's fallen in love with Shi Chang. Soon it starts raining and Wada rushes to Shi Chang to show her the song translation. In the next scene, Shin is seen climbing a mountaintop with some villagers. All of a sudden, a bag of one of the villagers falls off. In an attempt to save it, Shin hits his head into a tree. 
Suddenly, his memory comes back and he rushes to Wada to inform him of the good news that they can return back. He tells him to keep waiting till they arrange another tortoise for their raft. The villagers tell Wada that they want their village to be wealthy as it's a forsaken place. Meanwhile, Yuji is seen mysteriously staring from a corner as if he almost has a vicious scheme cooking in his mind. At night, Yuji has a dream where he is in a city and gets into a feud with a group of men. There's a lot of firing and Yuji is shot many times. Yuji wakes up scared. On the other hand, Wada has a dream in which Yuji is covering his face in mud before falling to the ground. The next day, Wada talks about going back and it looks like Yuji doesn't want to come. Just then, the mayor of the village arrives and gives a vague message saying that one does not know the value of what he owns until it's lost and then they understand the luxury of giving it up. In the next scene, the villagers are excited that their village will soon have electricity. On the other hand, Wada can't stop thinking about Shi Chang. He goes to meet her and finds her singing on the crash site with the deaf guy, Yan Wu. So he quickly turns on his recorder to record her voice. Meanwhile, Shen spots Yuji walking in the middle of the night. He follows him only to see him killing the tortoises. Turns out he has been killing the tortoises as he doesn't want to go back to the city about which he has been having nightmares. Shin rushes to Wada and warns him to leave us as Yuji has reached his peak of insanity. But before Wada could run, Yuji arrives back so Wada pretends to sleep. In the morning, Wada manages to sneak out of the cabin but before he could run away with Shin and the sailor, he realizes that he can't leave a lunatic like Yuji in the village. Just then, Yuji arrives and starts firing bullets to stop them from escaping. He later explains to Wada, Shin, and the sailor that he wants to prevent modern civilization from exploiting the village. He fears that civilization will bring the complications of the modern world to the village. Wada tries to explain to him that tragedies in the village will decrease if they have better medicine and tools. He reminds him that modernization is important as he himself had to use trains and airplanes to get here. He advises Yuji to establish a village-owned company and set regulations to prohibit excessive digging and protect its traditions to reach an understanding. Wada then persuades Yuji to try flying with the wings. However, both of them end up crashing. After that, Wada stayed in the village for some time and then returned to Japan to raise a family. He kept visiting the village but never settled there, although he misses the excitement of flying. Yuji became the village development advisor in exchange for one of his fingers, which is a tradition in Japanese Yakuza culture. The film ends with people flying into the air, which means Wada has finally learned how to fly. This movie has a rating of 7.4 on IMDb. I hope you all liked the video. If yes, then make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until then, take care and goodbye.